Hello and welcome to the last webinar or last session in our four-part series of What's New in SolidWorks 2014. Today we will be covering the topic of focus design tools. My name is Nathan Dunn, Elite Application Engineer for Go Engineer. I hope that you had an opportunity to view some of our other webinars in this series. We had <clears throat> three other presentations. The first one was done by Matt Morgan on increased performance November 20th. The second one was done by Corey Bauer, Integrated Workflows, on November 22nd. Mark Sheets did Enhanced Visualization just the other day on December 18th. And today we will be focused on the design, uh, Focus Design Tools. So some of the key concepts in the Focus Design Tools area is to capture initial ideas quickly, complex curves made simple, integrate engineering disciplines, and new tools to provide new possibilities. The first area that we're going to focus on today is on the sketch environment in SOLIDWORKS 2014. One of my favorite enhancements is the auto scaling on the first sketch dimension. I like to say it's the best enhancement that you'll never see. A new option for selections, which includes a lasso selection as opposed to just the box select. And the ability to add a new type of dimension, the path length dimension, as an actual driving value. Let's switch over to the software now and take a look at some of these enhancements at work. So in the first example, we're just going to look inside of a sketch environment. And if we look at this, um, this is similar to the workflow that I use, which is to sketch kind of the outside profile of whatever I'm looking to draw. And then I go back and add dimensions to it. In the past, we've always said if it's going to be small, draw it small. And if it's going to be big, draw it big to pre prevent relationships from turning inside out on things like tangencies. If we look at this now, you can see that this circle has a diameter value of close to 100 millimeters. We're going to add our first dimension to the sketch, and we're going to cut that in half, basically make it 50. And as you can see, nothing about my view scale, orientation, or the relationship between other entities in the sketch has changed at all. It only works on the first sketch that you add, and if you delete that dimension and add it back in, it will not continue to work in that way. So sketch the outside profile, add your first dimension, and you're going to be very happy with the fact that none of your relationships are going to cause issues with your sketch. The next option is in our right-click menu. Uh, everybody is used to the traditional box selection tools. We've had these around for a very long time. However, if you wanted to select these two circles, it would be very difficult to do that with any type of a box selection. If we do in closing, it doesn't get them. If we do a crossing, then it gets more than that. And so you either have to go in with a control selection or uh, remove things from a selection if you use box. Using the new lasso selection, you can actually just draw kind of a spline around what it is that you want to select. And you can see that that allows me to very quickly uh, capture the information that I'm looking for in order to add a relationship outside of the standard box selection tool. This is a sticky option, so if you utilize the lasso selection, it will be in everything that you do moving forward past that until you go back into the right-click menu and switch it back to box selection. The next option we have is a new dimension type, and it is the path length dimension. So just underneath our smart dimension toolbar, just hit the plus sign here, and we can see that there's a new option down here at the bottom called path length dimension. We'll just simply right click on this line and say select chain, and green check, and now we have an actual driving value that will change the orientation or the size of our sketch without using a belt or a chain just a simple series of lines, and we can drive that value to anything that we want it to be. So to recap on the sketch side here, <coughs> auto scaling, lasso selection, and uh, the path length dimension. Still in the sketch mode, we're going to now look at sketch picture enhancements. So if any of you are utilizing sketch pictures in order to draw some type of a organic shape, uh, this is a very cool new tool for being able to scale that and snap it into place. So again, I'll switch back to the software. And we're just going to go through the simple insertion process of a sketch picture. So we'll go Tools, Sketch Tools, and Insert Sketch Picture. Go ahead and add our picture in here. And this is pretty typical of what happens. You know, you end up with a picture that is either much larger or much smaller than what you actually need. You will notice that there is actually an option now or something new that's been added to the screen, which is this blue line with the arrow on it. 
And basically what you do is you just take this arrow and you kind of put the starting point where you want it to be visually and then you add the end point where you want it to be visually. And when you get it there, it will actually give you a dimension. Uh, so we'll type in 6.5 and this will automatically scale our picture to now be that size. So it just gives us some better options for being able to place this. So we can kind of come in here and just snap that too. And so now we have a good starting place for our insert sketch picture to where everything's going to be uh, properly sized from the beginning. So again, new options in the insert sketch picture uh, for scaling as well as the ability to actually snap that into place. The next one is uh, along splines, and there's going to be a lot of different things that we uh, talk about during this section. Uh, number one is the auto conic tangency, so when wherever we're adding sketch conics to um, our sketches, we don't actually have to add a tangent relationship, we'll automatically add that for us. Uh, the ability to actually have a fixed length spline. Uh, one of my favorite enhancements in this area is the fact that we actually have a new type of spline, it's called a style spline. It's much easier to create and much more flexible uh, when it comes to defining a spline wholly. And then one of the things that's certainly going to affect those that may not even be using splines, but it's the ability to actually replace a sketch entity. And we're going to talk about how that might benefit us today as well. So switching back over to SolidWorks, we'll go back over here and look at uh, our spline option here. <clears throat> And first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at this rib path sketch. So right now we have a, a couple of sketch fillets that have been actually added into these corners. And what we'd like to do is we'd actually like to replace those with some conics instead in order to get some better geometry. So we'll go ahead and replace, uh, delete those out. And we're just going to simply add back in our conic. You will notice that inside of the options for creating conics, there's actually an auto tangency checkbox here. If you select that, then we don't actually have to select right on the end of our line. We just select anywhere on the line and then anywhere on the other line, and it will automatically add the tangent relationships between those two lines that we've drawn the conic between. So this is certainly going to speed up the process of actually creating this type of geometry. And then we can come in here and just simply add a couple of dimensions. Again, we are driving the row values when we, drive, when we dimension a conic. So just add a couple of those here. And go ahead and exit that sketch. Again, looking at our rib profile, we can go back through... a similar process in order to actually change the profile here. So we're just going to simply delete this line and add a conic back into that. Again, just selecting the line and the line and then drawing our value out. Add a dimension here for our row value. And in this case, we're going to add that as a 0.2. And then just simply drag that to the midpoint. Exit that sketch. And very quickly we've made a pretty significant change to the profile that we have that is part of that sweep. Next one we want to talk about is the ability to specify a fixed length spline. Uh, in this case, we have a fairly well-defined spline. The only thing that's really not defined is an overall length of it. We've been able to do this in the past, however, it's been pretty complicated in order to do that, defining other things. So now when we come in here and just use the Smart Dimension tool and select anywhere on our spline, it will just automatically give us the length value here, so we can just type in a value. This works great if you have a specific size of maybe carbon fiber or something else that you're working with and you need to define that in order to be able to make sure that you can manufacture whatever it is out of that piece. Next one we're going to talk about is uh, the completely new spline tool, which is the ability to create the, um, the style spline. So we'll come in here and look at this. And this is kind of typical of creating a spline. 
Um, they're fairly difficult to control. They remain underdefined in a lot of cases just because of the complexity of actually getting those uh, defined properly. <clears throat> and if you look at the uh, curvature combs on this, they look pretty good, but they're still a little bit hard to control. It's hard to keep those things uh, exactly lined up. So we're going to talk about our new spline option, which is the style spline. So again, underneath the spline tool, you'll find a new option here for creating a style spline. And what this is going to actually have you do is it's actually going to create the polyline that you're going to use to control this spline. So again, we'll come up here and just draw basically some construction geometry. And then we can add dimensions and relationships to this construction geometry that are going to very clearly define our spline. So we'll start off by making sure that this is horizontal, adding a few dimensions on here. Even the ability to do something like a A symmetric relationship. So we'll just draw one down here to the midpoint. <clears throat> and then again, just continuing to add relationships between additional pieces of, ge of geometry. So make those perpendicular and equal in size. And you can see that we've very quickly uh, actually been able to fully define this spline. And if we, again, come in here and look at the same curvature comb set, you'll notice that it has a very smooth transition, a much simpler and easy way to, easier way to, to create this type of organic geometry. Now, the next thing that we run into is that th this spline has been used to create something that was very early in our design tree. And again, this doesn't just necessarily affect the use of splines. It will affect you in other areas as well. If you need to replace sketch geometry with another piece of sketch geometry, we actually have that option. And I'll just do a search up here in our search commands for replace entity. Just simply choose the entity that you want to get rid of. Choose the entity you want to replace it with. And then you have two options. One is the ability to make the old geometry construction or to actually delete it. Hit the green check, and when we get out of this, you'll notice that even though we have replaced the sketch entity for something very early in our tree, the entire tree stays intact. All right. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to talk about is conic fillets. Uh, so we have the ability to actually add a fillet using the standard fillet command, but actually specify it with a row value, a conic radius value, the ability to create variable conic fillets, and also the ability to create face fillets with conics as well. So in this case, we're going to look at this bottle. And we're just going to add a new fillet to this. So just using our standard features fillet command, You'll notice that there have been some changes made to the interface here through the property manager. So we're just going to do constant radius. When you look underneath the fillet parameters, it has the, uh, the radius value. There's also an option to choose what type of profile that you would like. Circular, conic row, or conic radius. If you choose a row value, you can type in a value in between 0 and 1 that will actually specify how flat or how sharp the conic will be. Or you can actually specify a radius in here. So if we take something like um, 10 millimeters, that's actually going to look like much more like a fillet. If you change that to something like 100, you can see that the fillet becomes very flat. And something very small, like maybe 2 millimeters, and the fillet becomes very sharp. Something to certainly be aware of is the fact that you can actually add that, but it is going to be added through your standard fillet command. Next, we're going to focus on some sheet metal enhancements in the part environment, uh, some enhancements made to the sweat flange, new sheet, this new sheet metal gusset feature, a new option for adding corner relief, and some enhancements have been made to transition or lofted bends. So 
So we'll start off with just a standard sheet metal part, and if we just do a flat pattern on this, some of you may have seen this in the past, that it creates a flat pattern that seems very difficult to manufacture. It was hard to control that in previous versions. Now if we just simply come in here to our first feature, and we'll just edit that, select the edge that we want to remain flat, and now when we create a flat pattern, it unfolds in a very predictable manner. When it comes to adding sheet metal gussets, this has been something, uh, a new. this is a brand new tool for SOLIDWORKS 2014. Works very similar to a lot of our other tools. Basically, you just control or just select two edges that are perpendicular to each other. You like to fill it to bypass. Set any of the parameters for how you want to control that, and then just simply hit the green check, and you will see that it's actually added a gusset into that corner that would be uh, formed into the metal itself. One of the things that you'll notice about SOLIDWORKS 2014 is just the fact that a lot of our property managers have become much more sticky in that they actually remember the parameters that have been added, therefore making it easy to add similar features into other models or into the same model multiple times. The next one is a new option for controlling how corners are being treated within the model itself. So we'll just simply come over here and select a new feature option called Corner Relief. Collect all of the corners in the model. And now we have options for controlling those based on a rectangular relief option, a circular relief option, a tear, an op round, or a constant width. One of the most significant parts, portions of this is the fact that you're actually going to see a very visual representation within the bent model that we may not, that you wouldn't have seen in the past. So if we make that a very exaggerated corner relief, you'll notice that in the bent state of this sheet metal part, we're actually able to see that relief very clearly. All right, let's talk about transition or lofted bends for a moment. Uh, first thing we want to notice is the fact that this semicircle has not been divided into segments in order to match the number of segments inside of our square profile. So we'll go ahead and select both of those profiles, and you'll notice that it does not give me an error message saying that uh, the, number of mat the numbers don't match or spinning the profiles to match each other. Next thing that we can see here is underneath the face, uh, the faceting options, we actually have the ability to specify a chord tolerance, the total number of bends, the length of each bend, so segment length, or the actual segment angle. Again, notifying, noticing the fact that in our bent state, we're actually getting a very nice visual representation of whatever option we've chosen. And if you make a drawing of this, it's going to very clearly define each one of those bend lines in order to create that transition break. Next up are some changes inside of the weldment uh, area of SOLIDWORKS, as well as something that's going to affect those who even aren't using weldments, uh, some changes to the whole wizard, uh, configurable equations, a through all in both directions, and a host of other uh, things that are listed there. So coming back over to SOLIDWORKS, one of the first things I want to point out is uh, on thin parts in the past, and this is bridged across not just weldments but other assemblies as well, if you have thin parts, a lot of times we've got to bleed through from the components underneath that. You will still see that if you're zoomed out and in a rotation, but as soon as you let go of the rotation, it just cleans up that display, allowing us not to be uh, having to look at those thin, through those thin parts to features below them. The next one is a pretty significant structural change for how weldments are actually being uh, handled inside of SOLIDWORKS. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we, one thing we want to point out here is the fact that inside of this you actually have the options for standard types, but these can actually be controlled through configurations now. And the significant advantage to these being controlled with configurations is the fact that you won't have to go back in and respecify a location or a starting point on the sketch because it's not actually changing files. So what this will look like is in your weldment profile, you will actually see a weldment profile that is the folder that it's going to be contained in for the standard. Underneath that will actually be a part file, and then the sizes will be controlled by configurations within that part file. Next we'll look at some improvements for the, uh, the whole wizard. So if we come in here and just edit this feature.
there's actually been three new types added as standards to the hole wizards. We have the standard counter bore, counter sink hole, tap hole, pipe taps, legacy. And then our three new ones, which would be counter board slots, counter sunk slots, and straight slots. Hopefully you guys saw the presentation on our new uh, abilities to create assembly mates between slots and position components within slots. This is going to make creating them much easier, and because we're using the whole wizard when you create a drawing of this, it's going to have an automatic count, therefore eliminating any confusion on uh, the number of holes, or in this case slots, that would be necessary in order to complete your project. On the position tab, you actually have the ability to here to control the angle, rotation, and length of the slot through standard dimensions on a construction line. And then when you finish, you can see here that our slots have been added in a very predictable manner. Next one is one that I am certainly happy with myself. Uh, if you sketch something and you end up needing to cut it through in both directions, underneath the standard right-click menu, you now have through all in both directions, as well as underneath direction one in the property manager for any cut, through all both directions is a uh, in condition option. Therefore, eliminating the need to actually turn on the two directions and specify through all again. So thank you very much for attending the Design Without Limits uh, Focus Design Tools presentation. If you guys have any questions, please use the chat window here. Uh, we'd be glad to address any of those specifically for you today. All right, if there's no questions, then that will be the end of our presentation. Uh, you can find, a recorded, find this presentation recorded on our website uh, in the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much, and have a great day.